Hi everyone, it's Calculus by Christy, and in this video, I'm going to go through a free response question that was on the AP Calculus exam in 2021. One of the best things you can do to prepare for the AP Calculus exam is to practice free response questions from past exams. In the description below, I've provided a link to College Board's website where you can find this question along with scoring guidelines and even sample responses. I will be bringing you free response practice until the AP exam, so make sure to subscribe to see those upcoming videos to help you prepare. And comment below about any questions you have, and check out the rest of my channel for videos on various calculus topics. Let's get started. And here is question number one from the 2021 AP Calculus exam. In this one, you can use a graphing calculator. So number one reads, the density of a bacteria population in a circular petri dish at a distance r centimeters from the center of the dish is given by an increasing differentiable function f, where f of r is measured in milligrams per square centimeter, and values of f of r for selected values of r are given in the table above. And we're going to use the data in the table to estimate f prime of 2.25, and then using correct units, we're going to interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of this problem. Problem. And interpreting the meaning of your answer is a common thing that is asked on the AP exam. So since we have a table, we're actually unable to find the derivative just by looking at a table. So that's why we're going to estimate the derivative using two points from the table. And 2.25 is right in between our values of 2 and 2.5. So we're going to be using both of these points. So to estimate f prime of 2.25, that's going to be approximately equal to the slope between the two points that I drew the little square around. So it's going to be approximately equal to f of 2.5 minus f of 2 all divided by 2.5 minus 2. And so if I plug in those values, it would be 10 minus 6 divided by 0 0.5 or 4 divided by 0 0.5, which is 8. So that is the estimate of f prime of 2.25. And then it says using correct units, interpret the meaning of your answer in context of this problem. And so the meaning would be at a distance 2.25 centimeters from the center of the Petri dish, the density of the bacteria population is increasing because the estimate of the derivative is positive, that population is increasing at a rate of 8 milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter. Let me show you how I got this unit of milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter. And that's because the units in the numerator of my slope here, the f of 2.5 minus f of 2, that was in units of milligrams per square centimeter. And then I would was dividing by the difference of 2.5 minus 2, which was values for r, which was in centimeters. So that's why it's milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter. All right, let's move on to part b. And in part b, it says the total mass in milligrams of bacteria in the petri dish is given by the integral expression of 2 pi and then this integral given here. We want to approximate the value of this integral using a right Riemann sum with the four subintervals indicated by the data in the table. And here we're going to be using a Riemann sum, which is which means to approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. If you'd like to look at a video that I made in the past about Riemann sums, click here to see that video where I explain everything about Riemann sums. So we are going to use a right Riemann sum to estimate this uh, mass of bacteria. So I'm going to write out that 2 pi, and then the integral from 0 to 4, of r f of r dr is approximately equal to, and I'm going to take that 2 pi and bring it all the way out in front. And then I want to use a right Riemann sum here. So I know I need to find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the base times the height. And we're going to use the four subintervals in the table. So the first one we're going to use is the rectangle that goes from an r value of 0 to an r value of 1. And the base of that rectangle has a length of 1 because we're going from 0 to 1. 
So the base of the rectangle is one, and then the height of the rectangle is going to be the value of the function, which remember our function is r f of r, and I'm going to use the values on the right. So I'm going to multiply that base one by the r value on the right, which is one, times the f of r value on the right, so f of one is two. Then I'm going to add in my next rectangle, which is between these r values of one and two. So between one and two, the base is one again. And then multiplied by the r value on the right is two, because I'm looking at r values from one to two, and I wanna take those values on the right since I'm looking at a right Riemann sum. And then f of two I would use is six. All right, and then the next rectangle in our right, right Riemann sum is from r values of 2 to 2.5, and you can see from 2 to 2.5 that base of the rectangle would now be 0.5, and then times my height of my function, which is r, f of r on the right, and r is going to be 2.5 on the right, and f of 2.5 is going to be 10. And then our very last one is going to be the rectangle from 2.5 to 4, which is a base of 1.5 times the r value on the right times f of 4, which is 18. All right, and remember, this problem, again, you can use your calculator. So from here, I plugged in all of this right here in between the brackets, and I got... Where is it? I got 134.5. And try it yourself and make sure you get the same number that I did. And when I multiply those together, I got 269 pi. And I would want to state a unit here. And remember, you're looking for the total mass in milligrams of bacteria. So my final answer is going to be 269 pi milligrams. And also, if you're wondering, like, how does it come out to milligrams? Well, it does tell you in the problem, but besides being in the problem, think about what we are multiplying together here. So our first number in each of these that we multiplied together was in units of R, which was in centimeters. And then this second value, remember, was then the R value on the right, which was also in centimeters. And then I was multiplying it by the F of R value, which, which was in milligrams per square centimeter. And so if you think about canceling, these centimeters squared cancels with the centimeter squared in the denominator. And that's why the final unit does end up being milligrams. And I think we answered everything in that question. All right, let's move on to part C. Part C, so it's the same problem, you know, that we had before, the same original problem. And then this says part C is the approximation found in part B. So that approximation we just found of 269 pi milligrams, is that an overestimate or an underestimate of what the total mass of bacteria actually is in the Petri dish? Because remember, we were using a Riemann sum only to approximate the mass. That doesn't give us the actual mass. And this, again, is the integral that was in part B. So to figure out if the approximation we found is an overestimate or an underestimate, we want to figure out if our function, r, f of r, is increasing or decreasing. So that's what you would look at for right Riemann sums or left Riemann sums, whether they're an over or under approximation. You look at whether the function is increasing or decreasing to determine that answer. And so to figure out if a function is increasing or decreasing, I'm going to look at the derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative with respect to r of my function r f of r. And to find this derivative, I would have to use the product rule. So I would be taking the derivative of r, which is 1, times f of r plus r times f prime of r. And I want to figure out, is this derivative positive or negative to figure out if the function is increasing or decreasing? Well f of r, if you go back to the table, you can see that all of the f of r values given are all positive numbers. So I think to myself, this would be 1 times a positive number, and then plus r. If you notice here, again, all of the r's are positive numbers. And then 
I have to multiply by f prime of r. And you're thinking, how do I know what is the sign of the derivative? Well, it does say in the problem that it is given by an increasing differentiable function f. And since f is differentiable and always increasing, we know that f prime of r is going to be a positive number. And just by kind of evaluating this, one times a positive number plus a positive number, you know that this derivative of r f of r is going to be a positive number, which means r f of r is an increasing function. And therefore, because of that reason, the approximation found in part B is an overestimate of the total mass of bacteria in the Petri dish because R f of R is an increasing function. Let's move on to the last part, part D. And in part D, it says the density of bacteria in the Petri dish for R values between one and four is modeled by the function G defined by this function here involving cosine. For what values of K between one and four is G of K equal to the average value of G of R on the interval from one to four? So the first thing I wanna find here is the average value of G of R. So to find that, I'm going to find G average. And the way that we find the average value of the function is we find one over B minus A, so one over four minus one, times the integral from A to B of G of R dr. And I'm actually going to show you how I would use my calculator to do this entire problem. So I'm actually not going to type in anything quite yet. But basically what I wanna find is where is this average value? And notice I'm just writing G of R because G of R is already defined here in the problem. So I'm not gonna spend my time writing it again. As long as it's given in the problem, I can just write G of R in my work. And I wanna know where this average value is equal to, so where is g of k equal to that? So where is this equal to my original function? Let me show you how I would find this answer all on my graphing calculator because remember for problem one, you can use your graphing calculator to solve this. So on the calculator into my y1, here is the original function that they give us that is g of r or we can consider it as g of k. Then in Y2, I'm going to type in that average value. So here I have, let's see, I have one over four minus one, which would be one over three. And I'm going to multiply by the integral. So I'd be multiplying by, okay, math nine, remember, is how you get to that integral. The integral from, that was, oops, not zero, check that, one to four of, my function, now I already typed it into Y1, I don't wanna type it all again. So here's a cool graphing calculator trick. I would press alpha trace and then just select Y1, saying I wanna take the integral of that original function. And notice that I've just used X for all of the R's um, and that is just fine to do. Okay, so I wanna know where that original function, G of K, is, is equal to the average value. So that's why I typed it into Y2. Oh, I also did um, go to my window and I changed my X min and max to be from zero to five. Since I wanna look between one and four, I just went a little bit outside that window. So now I'm going to press graph and take a look at that. And remember, we're trying to find where these are equal, which means we need to find where these two functions intersect. So for that, I'm going to press second trace and go to number five intersection. And I just have to get close to that intersection value and then press enter three times. And then down below, as soon as it says the word intersection, you know you found uh, the intersection point of these two functions. And so my answer is going to be right here at 2.497. Remember on the AP exam, you have to give at least three decimal places and you can either round or truncate those answers. So 2.497 is going to be our answer here. Since we're finding the value of K, I'm going to write that K equals 2.497 and that's where the two would be equal. 
All right, everyone, that is question number one on the 2021 AP Calculus exam. Look for future videos of the other questions from the 2021 exam, and doing this practice is going to help you prepare for that AP exam coming up before you know it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already so that you can see these videos as they are posted, and good luck on that AP exam. Bye, everyone.